Good afternoon, this is Nicholas from Gandor Gaming, and I bring you guys my Naturia deck profile 2022 post Darkwing Blast. Now this deck is actually really, really powerful, and it doesn't get even more stupid when the new Seizu cards come out. But it's going to be a while before I can pick up those cards, uh, because I know from the get-go they're going to be like a $200 engine, and I don't have the money for that. So I'm going to have to wait on the Seizu cards. So I was debating if I make the deck profile now or later, but I just feel like now is the time because I have all the cards for Darkwing Blast and this is still Darkwing Blast format. So I just want to go over to Churia's because I think they're a really, really powerful rogue deck right now, uh, possibly even tier two. And uh, they have the potential to steal many games. So let's just go straight into this and show you the power of Naturia. Three cards plus the Vernalizers as a whole where all this deck needed, which technically is a shit ton of cards, if you think about it. But honestly, the cherry got exploded with these three new cards. And uh, the Vernalizers are just a great inclusion for all Earth archetypes. So let's just go straight into this. So first things first, we do play three Naturia Carmilla. Carmilla is a fantastic support card. We just got legacy support. It's a low forward plant tuner, 1400 attack, 700 defense. So out of your Naturia monsters, is already one of the strongest, which is saying something. One of the biggest issues with the Naturias is that they're kind of weenies, all of them. Like if we're gonna have monsters with 200 attack and say, that's the best I got. But uh, they all have really, really good effects. The only reason why Naturia has never been good is they never had a way to spam on the board. Uh, we kind of did when your opponent does something with uh, Ant Jaw, which we'll get into. But uh, Ant Jaw wasn't consistent enough to get to. But now we don't need always Andra because Carmilla is just a one card starter, which is fantastic. Uh, basically what this card does is when this card is normal, special summon, you send a Naturia card from deck to grave, which is going to be your Naturia trap card. Uh, then basically has the effect of if you would tribute monsters, the activated effects of the Naturia monsters, mill two instead basically, which is fantastic. And then also has the effect when your opponent normal or special summons a monster, um, except for the damage step of course. You can spend some one Naturia monster from your graveyard, which is also fantastic. Everything about this card says win the game. It has three really, really broken effects, and it's a little Fortuner to help us climb into our most powerful synchros in Yu-Gi-Oh. Must of three of. Really, really cheap deck, too, because all the Naturias got reprinted. And the, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, I forgot what that green set was called. But basically, they all got reprinted in that, uh, hidden arsenal set that was not the original hidden arsenal because they were printed in that but the reprint hidden arsenal with the skill drains were in which is really really good because a lot of these cards weren't reprinted since then so it's nice that they were reprinted literally this year uh next we have three mole cricket mole cricket is another broken support card uh this is probably one of the best cards i ever read no joke uh it's a level one inset and has the effect where during the main phase quick effect Contribute this card, especially when it you from your uh, deck, which is fantastic. And then it has the effect, if your opponent has monsters on the field, you special summon two from the deck. As long as they have their monsters are bigger than your monsters attack. Which is always going to be the case because all of our monsters are weenies. Again, Mole Cricket has zero attack, zero defense. And then he also has the effect when basically uh, he can reborn himself, which is also fantastic. So your opponent's special summons from the extra deck while you have this card in your graveyard. You just special summon this card and you only use each effect once per turn. This card is stupid in so many ways and it's one of the most powerful cards in the entire archetype. Do not underestimate the Mole Cricket. Another really, really good thing about the Chariot is that it Earths. Meaning all the Bistic cards don't work on them, which is fantastic. So a lot of people are switching off DD Crow to the Bistids. Uh, DD Crow would hurt this deck, but the Bistids don't, which is really, really fantastic. I will say also Ash really hurts this deck as well, because you do pitch for cost, which does suck. But Ash is getting less and less play because of tier elements. So this is a really, really good rogue option. Alright, now I'm trying to go into our next monster, Antjaw. Ant Jaw is a very, very powerful monster. This is one of the original broken Naturia monsters. Basically, it has the effect when your opponent's best one's a monster, 
You're supposed to have one level three or lower materia from your deck. Not a once per turn. Every time your opponent spams a card, you spam a card, and we can get really, really stupid, really, really quick. A very powerful monster. It's also a level two, allowing us to have access to synchro plays because Antra plus Camilla is a synchro six. And we do play synchro uh, two or three, so three plus two equals five as well, which is really, really great. A must of two of the deck, very easy to get out, and a very, very powerful card. All right, next we do play two Sunflower. Sunflower is our monster negate, which is fantastic. It has the effect when your opponent's monster effect is activated. You can tribute an Echuria monster besides himself. Negate the activation if you do destroy it. Actually, I don't think he has that specification. Hey, it has to be a different Echuria. This is tribute of Echuria monster and this card. Oh, okay, okay. It's two tributes. But again, Camilla, this is milled to instead. So, it's not that bad of a card, and it's a must have two in the deck. Really, really powerful card right there. Uh, next, you do play one Vine. Uh, the Tree of Vine is a card we used to never play. Same thing goes for uh, Sunflower. But a uh, Vine basis is you can, your opponent activates to spell a trap. Quick effect, you tribute one of the Monster and this card to then negate the activation uh, and you destroy it. So, this is our spell negate, that's our monster negate. And of course, Camilla does not care. So, really, really powerful card in general. And then we do have our one Horn Needle. Horn Needle is also a really, really good card. He's our biggest beat stick when it comes to the Cherry Monster. He's a level 4, uh, which also comes up. But basically, when you put him with Special with a Monster, Quick Effects, you can tribute one face of the Cherry other than this card and then destroy it, which is fantastic. Very powerful fact, plus it's 1800 beat stick, pushing you for game. Next, we do play the one Rose Whip because Rose Whip is fantastic. I uh, used to see these Inferion decks. Basically, this card says, hey, if your opponent activates a spell card or trap card, they only get one effect per turn, which is really, really good. Really evil, devilish card. Plus, it's a level 3 tuner, which helps us extend even further. And right, finally, for our last the Chariot, we do play the one the Chariot Butterfly. Just because we have so many weenies on the field, sometimes you just need to negate an attack. This one's the best at doing that because we have this, it is Mills too, which is fantastic. A very powerful card, and I really like it. That is it for the Churias. Now we'll go on to the Vernalizers. Right, so now it's time to talk about the Vernalizers. And this is one of our first cards we got from Dark Queen Blast. Uh, I already talked about these two, but now I want to talk about the Vernalizer side. Uh, Vernalizer of the Virtualist Goddess is our boss monster deck. And this card is a house. So once we turn, when a monster effect activates by your opponent resolves, if you control five or higher, uh, five or more Earth monsters, you can negate that effect. If you do destroy that card, so it is a monster negate, which is fantastic. And then it also has the effect you only use once per turn. They can target one face of monster your opponent controls, take control of it. It becomes an Earth monster, and then during your opponent's turn, quick effect, you can target one Earth monster in gr your grave, special summon it. This card is a house. It's something really easy in this deck. Uh, we have a field spell that does it. We have this guy who does it. There's just, this just, this thing's a house. It's a monster negate. It steals cards. It's stupid. It, it, it's, everything about this card says win more. And I really, really do appreciate it. Not to mention, it's a 2400 beat stick, which is also always fantastic. All right, so now it's time to talk about our three of Vernalizers, which are Vernalizer of the Flourishing Hills. Uh, Vernalizer of the Flourishing Hills is one of the best cards. Uh, for the Vernalizer archetype and all the Vernalizers have this effect You can discard this card in another monster in order to spe uh, in order to do an additional effect And then once that additional effect resolves you can reborn one earth monster from your graveyard and uh, Basically once you do that you are locked into earth effects for the rest of the turn Which is fine because we're an entire earth deck so that part does not matter but uh, basically, uh, her effect is you can discard her in another monster or vernalizer, of course, to a vernalizer card. So you can even discard the spells to add one vernalizer card from your deck to your hand. So this card's actually pretty decent. Uh, none of the vernalizers are pluses in advantage, but they're always gaining you more cards. Does that make sense? So, yes, it is a discard too. But whatever you're discarding, you're just reborning onto the field. And then this card is adding a Vernalizer card. So 
honestly, it is kind of great because you're using your normal, without using your normal, and you're getting cards out of your deck, which is fantastic. The next three of, we do play the Vernalizer of the Awakening Hills. This guy is also a three of. This guy is fantastic for the simple fact that he is Foolish Burial. So he has the effect where you can discard him and another monster or a Vernalizer card in order to uh, basically send one Earth monster from your deck to Grave, then Reborn in Earth, which would be great, but he does have the restriction that you can't Reborn the card you send to Grave by his effect, which is a little tough, but that's fine because all the other Vernalizers can Reborn whatever you send anyway. So it's just a really, really good way to get cards out of your deck. Not to mention, it is just Foolish Burial, which is fantastic. Which helps you get to really, really powerful cards. And then, of course, you do Reborn a Earth, which is fantastic. For our last three of Vernalizer, we do play three Vernalizer of the Mister, um, Minister of Seeding? Misting Seedings? Uh, I'm not exactly sure. It's, it's the duck. We all call it the duck. It is the duck. Uh, Vernalizer of the Misting Seedings. Uh, sub uh, seedings my apologies is the one i'm having the most trouble with but uh basically all earth mon all monsters on a field lose 600 attack except vernalizer monsters going to discard this card and one monster or vernalizer card you can't activate non-earth monster effects for the rest of the turn which is all the restrictions but then it has the effect we could add one earth fairy from your deck to your hand and then of course reborn an earth from grave which is fantastic so basically it says, hey, discard this card, search any Vernalizer monster, and then, hey, you didn't reborn whatever you discard, which is still fantastic, or whatever in Grave. Really, really powerful card. Uh, personally, uh, it's better in Medulce, just for the fact that they're all Earth Fairies, so you can also search Medulce monsters in that deck. But it's still a really, really powerful card, and overall is another three of in the deck. And then finally, we talk about our two O's and our one O's. Uh, we do play two Vernalizer of the Frawling Mountains. This was a three of, but I did cut one of it just for we could play the last one, which we'll get into. But uh, Frawling Mountains is a good one where it basically has the effect where you discard this card, number monster, a lot of earth effects, and then you draw one. Uh, then you get the reborn earth from your graveyard, which is fantastic. It just helps you get into advantage. It's a draw one, and it's a free special summon. So that's always a good card. Uh, good card almost ever, and it's a level 3, so I didn't mention it. So, we have 4s and 3s, which will help Synchro Climb even more, which is also fantastic. And then finally, for our last Vernalizer monster, we are playing Vernalizer of the Flourishy Fields. Uh, really, really powerful card, but it is definitely our least of them. The only reason why we're really playing Vernalizer of the Flowering Hill Fields is because our field spell can basically banish this one from the graveyard. In order to special summon her from deck, which is really, really powerful. So, honestly, we're just playing her for that reason. But her effect isn't the worst. So, her effect is basically you could discard her and another monster to add a earth from your grave back to hand, and then you get the reborn one from grave to hand. So, it's a really, really cool recursive effect. It's a good one of in the deck for its effect alone, but ultimately, it's definitely the weakest of the bunch. And I would definitely say it's a definite one of. Now it's time to go over our non-engine cards. Uh, these are Nutria Engine, Vernalizer Engine. Now it's time to go, about, go over staples and does really cool tech options. So first things first, three Ghost Bell. Uh, Ghost Bell is the only Earth uh, hand trap that's really good this format. And uh, it's pretty sick, besides the Biru, of course. Or besides the Biru. But uh, this card's actually pretty sick against tier. Basically, we're locked to only activating Earth effects anyway. So why not have Ghost Bell? Ghost Bell basically says, hey, let's just uh, the gate graveyard effects is just quite powerful and really, really strong. If you want to switch these out for Nib, you definitely can. The only reason why uh, we're not really playing other hand traps is due to the fact we do lock ourselves. Now, usually we don't lock ourselves on our opponent's turn, which a hand trap would be used. But just in case we need a hand trap during our turn, which can come up, for example, uh, tier activate their effect on your turn, you have to pitch the ghost spell in order to negate something. That's pretty solid. Not to mention it is an Earth level three uh, Earth tuner. I mean, we can reborn this sometimes, and it is an Earth level three tuner, so that does have some speculations. 
for our final monster in the main deck, we do play one Amorphage Goliath. So Amorphage Goliath is our really good stun card. Uh, I see a lot of people have been playing the Earth Barrier statue. But honestly, I do think this card's better just due to the simple fact that it's just bigger. So Amorphage Goliath has the effect when neither player can spell summon monsters from the extra deck is set amorphic monsters which is fantastic you've probably seen this card a lot in dragon link decks they usually summon this off heretic seal uh and basically it just floodgates your opponent but in this deck it's a boss monster because you can easily send this card to graveyard with uh, vernalizer of the awakening forest and then use any of our vernalizer to get this card onto the field which is fantastic a really, really powerful card and that is it for our monsters I would imagine he's 2750, so weird uh, life points. Weird life points when you attack with him. And then that's it for the monsters. Now let's go over the spells and traps, which there isn't too many. This is a very monster heavy deck. And uh, let's just go straight into it. We do play three Naturia Blessing. Uh, Blessing is a really, really great card. Uh, just for the simple fact, it's uh, Reborn. Also, it's a quick play Synchro or Fusion, which is fantastic. So basically it has the effect where you can spell over one Naturia monster from your hand or graveyard. And then it has the effect immediately after this card resolves, you have a Synchro Summon monsters using monsters you control as material, or Fusion Summon monsters you control as material. Uh, what I really, really like about this card that it is a Reborn, and it's a quick play that allows you to Synchro Summon on your opponent's turn, which can really screw them over. And they activate, uh, what's it called, uh, Dark Ruler No More, on your board that usually is the end of the game but you can just chain blessings afterwards to then quick synchro into an Aturia Beast or Barkion to still stop them from playing the game. Is it the greatest? Not exactly but it's still a really really powerful card and I'm still happy about it. Uh, then next we do play two Vernalizer the Foam Bloom. This card is kind of our win condition as well. It makes all our monsters beefy. We control five Earths and also has the effect where you banish the uh Vernalizer the flowering fields over here in order to dispose summon our boss monster from the deck which is fantastic but Vernalizer the full bloom basically has the effect where all monsters you're, you control gain a thousand attack while you have five or more earth monsters on the field which is fantastic and then it had Chris I already said it's special summons from the deck which is also fantastic and uh, basically that's all this card really does it is a free special summon for a big girl without having to sit in the grave in order to get it and overall, just a really, really powerful card. Um, yeah, there's nothing else left to say. This card's just really, really strong. I don't, it doesn't do anything. I wish it activated adds a Vernalizer. Or, oh, imagine if this thing had the effect where every time you would activate a Vernalizer effect, you draw one. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. Because the one of the issues of this deck is that you can run out of cards in hand. So if we had a draw engine that just said, hey, every time you uh, technically minus yourself, draw one. So you're always plusing an advantage. This deck would be so stupid. But uh, for now, this card's still really, really good. And it's just a two of in a deck. Uh, we also do play two Foolish Burial Goods because it's a starter. Uh, because we can send this guy to Grave, uh, Sacred Tree. Sacred Tree is a really, really powerful card. It's what we're sending for Camilla. And it's also what we're sending for... Uh, Foolish Burial Goods. Basically, it has the effect where when this card sets the grave, you can add a Naturia card from your deck to hand, which is fantastic. It just searches any Naturia card. Uh, when a new Isiju cards come out and you mill this thing, it's not a once per turn, so you can mill this in plus three, which is fantastic. Uh, it also has the effect where you can tribute one Earth Insect Monster, special summon one Earth or lower plant monster from your deck, and then if you tribute an Earth Plant Monster, you spell summon one Earth Insect from the deck, which is really, really cool. That's not the worst thing in hand, but you definitely don't want to see it in hand. That's why we're just playing as many ways to get it out as possible, which is really, really good. And then finally, for our last card, we do play the one Vernalizer of the Flower Buds. Uh, this card is a really cool tech option. Uh, we're playing so many Vernalizers that uh, we can easily search this card out in our combo. And basically, we end on like five Earths anyway. This card literally just reads Compulse, which is fantastic. So if you never read this card, basically target face of cards that your opponent controls up to the number of Earth monsters with different names that were special summoned from the graveyard, which of course is the whole Vernalizer gimmick that they special summoned from the graveyard. And then, basically, for every uh, you return Earth monsters, you return basically you return your shit to return your opponent's shit. Basically, a really, really cool card. 
and just uh, really, really powerful, allowing you to just really push for shit, which is great. And uh, that is it for the main deck. I hope you all enjoy. Now let's just go over the extra deck, which isn't too much. Uh, I don't want to go too in detail because the extra deck is just any generic earth shit. But I'll just talk about the three most important ones. First things first, Naturia Beast. Naturia Beast is a must of three of in the deck. A really, really powerful card. Just for the simple fact that when this card uh, is on the field, as long as you can mill cards, your opponent can't activate spell effects. Fantastic monster. Basically says, hey, spell cards... When they're activated, negate them. It does have to be on field for it to resolve, so they do Ghost Ogre it. The spell will resolve, which is a little annoying. But who's playing Ghost Ogre in the year 2022? A lot of people. But that's fine. No worries. We're not afraid of Ghost Ogre. Anyway, next we do play two Landois. Uh, Landois is our turtle friend. Uh, Landois is a very, very cool monster. Uh, we're basically also, they're all Earth Locks. So one of my favorite singles of all time is Naturia Beast. So the fact that Naturias can now easily make their own synchros is fantastic. It's kind of like the ice barrier issue where every other deck made their synchros better than ice barrier could. Well, Naturia had the issue where every other synchro deck made Naturia Bees better than they did. Which really sucked. But nowadays, we don't have to worry about that. We can make our card very, very easy. Uh, Landois is a very, very powerful card. But it's not the greatest. So Landois says uh, you got to discard... Basically to negate, which really, really sucks. But he is a monster negate, which is fantastic. Uh, he does have to be on the field like all the other monsters. But he is a minus, which does suck. He's the only synchro that's a minus. But he is a monster negate. That's not once per turn. So it's up to you. If you can keep up a hand advantage and you don't mind uh, using your entire hand, this card is Appaloosa, which is insane. But overall, it's just a really, really good monster negate. I usually use this effect once or twice. And then finally, two barking on because this guy is not a once per turn trap negate. Uh, he can negate counter traps, of course, because counter traps are faster than them. But uh, he can negate every other trap in the game, which makes him a uh, godsend against uh, Elige decks. They activate a trap card, continuous or normal, set, uh, banish two from grave, negate, non once per turn. If you have both these on the field, it's impossible for him to deal with it because you'll be milling to and banishing to every turn, which is really, really good. Really powerful deck. Really hope you guys enjoy. Uh, this technically is two more Naturia monsters. There's Exterior, which is a fusion, but we're never summoning out Exterior because we need it requires a Naturia Beast and Barkeon, and then Exterior just does what they do. It, it's just a combined version of both. I mean, we do technically do have Leo, who's our 3,000 beat stick. But uh, this is supposed to be Baron. Uh, that's all I can say about this card. I just wanted to show you the ridiculousness of uh, Leo Drake, who's their boss monster, by the way. The, all these synchros, their boss monster is Leo Drake. And look how sad he is. I guess Leo Drake does have an evolved form. But are you going to use Leo Drake to get to that evolved form? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, that uh, I, I really don't know what they're doing with this lion. Uh, Naturia Beast looks like a great tiger. He looks like a great... Dra uh, Barkon looks like a great dragon. Landois looks like a great turtle. That does not look like a good lion. <laughs> but uh, that's it. I hope you all enjoy. And uh, see you all in the next one. Take care. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.